Hey guys, I'm back today with a really special video. This video is going to be the first of its kind. It's going to be an interview series that I'm planning to do for one of the main, three main categories of videos that I'm planning to do on this channel. The first, obviously, is the content um, for, for the game that I'm trying to make. The second will be um, basically self-improvement videos. I think that's actually very, very important. I'm trying to develop myself and improve myself as well. And the third is uh, basically anything that talks about game design. I think that's going to be a really relevant to topic for this channel right now. So today I decided to, uh, I basically I decided to start things off with some, some things that I'm familiar with. So today I brought in Nesty Berry and Mighty Leafy. They're going to be hel helping me create this uh, video, the first of its kind, an interview series where I bring in experts on their specific field and in this case it's whichever game that they're playing and I try to ask them some questions I pick their brains and try to get their insights and see if I can use their ideas in the future game that I'm creating so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have them intro, uh, introduce themselves right now so without further ado please give a warm welcome to Nesty Berry and Mighty Leafy yeah so hi guys Nesty here like some of you already know me. I'm doing Amazon content as well. And yeah, I'm trying to give you lots of content for newer player, for late game player, like an overall content in my opinion. Like as you know, my main account is pretty far in the end game. I have a second account just to upload videos for newer people like how you progress fast if you want to, how you build your Titan lineups really fast, like all these kind of stuff. So, yeah, in general, I started making videos in German. And yeah, after some time, it became a bit boring. Then I switched to English. At the beginning, I was really rusty, like, I felt that I'm not that comfortable with speaking English, but after some videos it got a lot better, now it's feeling really natural. So, yeah. Hey guys, what's going on? Mighty Leafy here, and uh, I'm basically here as the Krillin of the trio. Uh, so, Fantasy and Nisty here are, you know, without a doubt, the Goku and Vegetas. And I'm, I'm just the fucking Krillin on the side chilling here with Android 18. So, in terms of power level, mine is substantially lower, but I feel like there might be a newer player base than even myself. So I'm here to inject a little bit of energy and silliness and just do random podcasts and I guess make podcasts with my friend Yugen and all that stuff. But yeah, basically here to make some MSL videos, um, covering very fundamental basic things for the beginning players because myself I'm only about mid game so yeah not not nearly as end game experts as these guys but I do what I can I wanted to try this out and see if it's like really good you guys are my guinea pigs by the way like I'm I'm totally oh, shit. shit on you guys but I, I oh shit guys, um, oh god like What's your history with gaming? Like, how did you start playing video games and then lead you all the way up to MSL? Oh, how all started? No, I don't all know. With... Probably when I was a kid, I had the Super Nintendo. It was fun. Then I got a PlayStation, like a Game Boy. Every kid in the school was playing Pokemon. I was already competitive there destroying these kids on school on the lip with my link cable oh man and yeah yeah strangling their necks with your link cable man that's hardcore yeah like <laughs> do, do you remember this i don't know if you both played blue and red I like have. Th 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 there was a bug that you can catch pokemon above level 100 and it was only one monster or one Pokemon that you could catch on on your game, and yeah, I, I was 
yeah, playing the game through like 10 times or so to get a good one. And yeah, I was able to catch Mewtwo there. And when I was oh, fighting so other kids, when I was fighting other kids, like I, I was testing how it can work. If you are attacking, for example, a normal Pokemon, okay. it's going back to level 100. I think it was like that. But if you are fighting over a link cable, the level stays. So I, I was testing out shit like how far are you able to raise the level? what happens afterwards and all that stuff. And then in the end, I was able to find out that level 255 is the maximum level. And with that, you can still fight other player. Yeah, obviously the other kids had no chance against a level 255 Mewtwo. Uh, well, you never thought of me. I would have came at you with a level 255 Ditto. <laughs> the choice scarf that the wasn't available you... at the time. Yeah, but you already would have a disadvantage. <laughs> Either I'm starting and I'm directly killing you, or you, you are able to morph into the Mewtwo, and then I have the first turn, and then no, I man. still have an advantage. I'd be like, I'd be like, I I have like a sacrificial guy, man. I'd have like a sacrificial Pikachu. Your Mewtwo Shadow Ball me. My yeah, but Pikachu that, that's guy, still a then disadvantage. Then my Ditto come out, and then my then, Ditto. Then I'm already killing two of you with one no, Mewtwo, man. and there are my, still my five Mewtwo behind. Like, my my ditto is like slightly faster, so he shadow ball your whole team from there onwards oh, because none of them are gonna survive my. Yeah, but at that time, <laughs> that, at that time you don't have those kind of skills. You, you could use uh, yeah, I know ice beam I know. also. We we had like real shit stuff, like fucking hyper beam, man. The only sad thing is that only years later I was able to find out that there is really a way to get the Mew. Yeah, you had to walk in very specific ways to manipulate the game code. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's fucking weird. And yeah, if obviously. You know, Google back then, you know, you just find that out instantly. Yeah, yeah, of course. But at that time, there, there was no one that yeah uh -huh. knew that there is this kind of trick. Yeah. Plus, plus you had like we had like fifty six k modems and stuff. So yeah, like, exactly. I still remember the sound in my ears. Yeah. It's like when I play Counter-Strike, like I'd, I'd like go in the game, I'd fucking kill like three people, and then find out I died like 10 seconds ago. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, but, but like my game was still like running because I had like fucking 1,000 ping or some shit. Man, that, that's some ghetto shit. Or like when I use smoke grenades in the tunnels, but... When you when you play Counter Strike back in the OG days, it was just fucking Thetas two all day, wasn't it? And then there was that little little room. You go in there, and everybody's always in there. And like, you throw a smoke grenade there, people are shitty graphics cat. They just freeze up. That's how you win. I started with Warcraft three as well. I never liked the normal game. Then I started yeah. to play custom games, and just because obviously like i'm always trolling we a friend of of mine and me we, we joined a dota clan and we're pretending like yeah of course we are really good we will help <laughs> you to progress and we had no idea about the whole game we don't even knew how the game is working if it's a tower defense or whatever we really had no clue we were just pretending that we are really good and that's how it started with Dota, and we were like, oh, the game is really cool. Yeah, and then, I don't know, 10, 15 years later, I'm still playing Dota. Like, at I some point, I was even really good. Like, when I was playing or scrimming against semi-professionals, here and there, some professional teams. And, yeah, after a while, I don't want to, to train all the time. Like, I don't want it to waste my, my time. Yeah, he became Gohan. The, the, I don't really like it to, to have set times where I have to be on my computer. Oh. And yeah, after that, it beca became much more casually for me after I was dropping out of the team. Mm -hmm. oh, but okay. yeah, I, I'm still following the scene, I would say. Here and there, I'm playing a game. Like not not as much as before, where I was like playing at least ten games a day or so. 
but mm. yeah, I'm, I'm here and there. I'm still playing. I'm watching some streams, and yeah, I still like the game. And yeah, it's probably the only game which has maybe a similar time spent like MSL for me. I just remember this one conversation I had with a random guy on a bus, like at one time, during like during high school, and he played well, and I played well. <laughs> we were able to just start a conversation just like that. Whoa, that's crazy! Was well, that how, your how way you... how to pick up girls? Yeah, yeah. oh, pick up guys. Starting... We, we don't have to talking yeah, about guys, man. There's no girls on World of Warcraft. It was picking up guys. You know, that reminds me of something really sick. I had a friend back in college, and he was, like, real good at World of Warcraft, but in a different sense. He was making money by pretending to be people's girlfriends on World of Warcraft. But he's a dude. He's a dude. Yeah, that's some crazy shit right there. I think a lot of and he actually... It, right? scam people like you know into like believing yeah, but i'm just goals. thinking like oh man all those people that think you're like their world of warcraft girlfriend but you're actually some no asian dude in real life in <laughs> fuck man that's crazy would, I'm not, would you I'm not pay me if i would pretend to be your girlfriend no no, man. I wouldn't even trade Yu-Gi-Oh cards with you. I mean, I can even try to to change my voice a bit. Oh, you mean like like this? Oh, yeah, I can talk yeah, like exactly. a girl. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I even want to talk like this. <laughs> Do you guys like my voice? But it's an interesting topic in general, I think, because yeah. I think I, I'm really good at that as well. Not pretending right. to be someone, but making in-game currency in different games. Like, I think it started with Diablo 2. Like, I I'm really good at finding these holes where prices are not stable. Like, I, I, f I find an item, and then I'm researching it all the time to see what is the real price. Like, can, can I buy it lower than I can sell it? And yeah, I was doing it for some days. And yeah, after that, I had like, I don't know if you played Diablo 2, I had like 60, 70 high runes already oh, after man. some days. Like, it's basically that I nearly cleared the game with that. Misty uh, Berry. The then, master then, of finding holes. Yeah, it sounds funny, but it's really like that. Then, it, <laughs> after that, it was yeah, World of Warcraft, where I don't know. After some days, I made like fifty, sixty thousand gold in what was it? Lich King. Like, I don't know. I, I found like two or three items that that's were back then. Like that's that's actually quite yeah. a bit. I think the biggest problem is if you are including a trade system, the developers have to find a different way of making money. Like at the moment, obviously, the whole game is like buying gems, and with those gems, you are pulling or doing whatever. If you don't need to buy the gems anymore, at least the people that are doing that, if they don't have to buy the gems anymore, they have to find a different way to get an income. Like, it, I think a good one would be Dota. Like, they're making so much money with crowdfunding. I mean, it would probably fit your topic here. Like, if we are taking the international tournaments, like yeah. the first one that only Valve was sponsoring, it was 1 million. The second one, I think it was Valve as well. And after that, they started to give out stuff like... What was it called? Com compendium, where, for example, you are paying 10 euro, and 2 euro 50 is going into the price pool, yeah. while 7 euro 50 is still for Valve, and like that, the price pool was able to rise from 1 million or 5 million or so with the second international to like I don't know the the third one was already 13 million just because of the crowdfunding yeah like only with that they were able to to get like i don't know 50 million income 
of 40 million, like that would maybe a way or, or how much money they are making with those customized uh, items. Like that's really crazy. And that's a different way of making an income. And it's even more successful in my opinion, because you don't really, I don't, I think you don't really see how you are losing your money. It's like win -win. if you're buying a game and the, the game costs you, I don't know, 150 euro, you're thinking like, wow, that's really, really expensive. And you would probably not buy it. But if you're playing a game and over a year, you are always buying stuff for like, let's just say 10 euro or so. In the end, over the whole year, you have paid for stuff that is worth like 120 euro. Like, you, you don't really see the, the price over the time that they are making with that kind of stuff in my opinion i you think it's a bit more money it just like yeah you, you're making money. much much more money with that like it's that's something i think that they, they have to include they have to find different way of income if they want to add a trading system like producing more and more customs like i i for example wonder why they have not give us like a way to change our main avatar like it's it's still three hair colors and <laughs> whatever why why are they not giving us i don't know it's one of those waifus or whatever how many can people I just, would buy can buy? i just draw my own <laughs> yep even if that might probably even a way like someone is drawing it and they are ju just creating it then like they are doing it with those contests but i think a lot of people would buy a different avatar more than different costumes for like odin and all these different monsters hey man i'm really wondering why they haven't man. did that yet like let's be honest how many people would buy i don't know uh, a girl that is like wearing nothing like every monster in the game <laughs> that they have as they're not, avatar they're not all but what? what the the thing is if i'm talking about dota you already have everything done it, it's not that there has to be like creating that exact thing like exactly let's let's take an item or so in dota it's like that that the artist is already creating the item with the engine that is used in the game and all the developers has to do is implement it another it's advantage in my opinion is like that let's call it every idiot can create their own items obviously a lot of items are created like that and you can handpick the best ones and you know this has to be someone that has a really high skill and you can use this person like fanta said you can use this person to create stuff that you as developer want to have as well like creating a new hero or in our case with msl a new monster or whatever i think it's really really powerful see the art team behind it is actually pretty good i think so. the, big, the biggest advantage of msl is that you, you you can play it while doing other stuff with runs like 20 times runs it's a lot safer as well, right? It's better to have your computer on the whole day than to have, say, I don't like your Galaxy Note 7, was it? Note 7? The one that they keep talking about, uh, you know, exploding and shit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. 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 like, you have that shit in your pocket, right? And you know where your pocket is. It's right next to, you know what? You don't want that shit exploding where it shouldn't. And I think another advantage of the game is that it's really casual friendly, in my opinion. Oh, definitely. But I think. at the same time, it's a disadvantage, in my opinion, because the people that like competition have no chance to get it in MSL. Pretty much. It's like you have no chance to compare yourself with other people in the game except maybe titan damage 
that's everything. In the arena, no one cares about who is ranked 2, who is ranked 10, who is ranked 100. All you have to do is get the maximum reward, and then there's rank 1. And rank 1 is so expensive that most people don't want it for just a holy gleam. So there's no competition to get rank 1. For example. So what do you think Like they should they should change, like move everything into into one um, and they have to change like clan battle systems where like it's not like a 12 hour period you you just go and then everybody around the world fights each other yeah something like that you have 24 hours to fight these opponents i don't know if it, it can even be your own time zone 24 hours like we have the full sunday mm -hmm. where they can calculate that stuff so from monday to saturday people fighting each other for 24 hours mm -hmm. and the calculation or the, the the week of the cvc ends on sunday where the, all these calculations are like the same for titans and all that stuff but i think they have to change that system because it's just broken if you have the right time zone you are winning this stuff that's not what the game should be in my opinion like let's be honest the clan that is always rank one is by far not the strongest clan. So it's kind of unfair against people that live in the wrong country in some case. Yeah. yeah. And that is how Nistaberry became the next Kaz. <laughs> Who is Kaz? <laughs> the main antagonist of Master Super League storyline. Do you think I really read this stuff? <laughs> 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 He's so fucking pissed that he got trapped in a world of waifus. And, you know, from your perspective, we get that little glimpse of maybe just why. And maybe one day... Some of us will follow in Kaz's footsteps. I mean, that's if we are talking about that, that's another point that I really hate. <laughs> like, in this game, everything turns into a girl. Like, you can have a dog, and at Evo 3, it's a girl. You can have a fish, at Evo 3, it's a girl. You, you, can, you, you can, can have a guy. Can you have a guy? Can you have a guy in Evo 3, and it turns into a girl? Yeah, and you can have a guy, and then you three, it's a girl suddenly. Like, everything yeah. is a girl. You can have a god like Odin, and suddenly it's a, a, a Odin is female. What the fuck? But, how, how can but the all father that. Odin oh. suddenly be a Dude, girl? You know what, man? You, you can have your cupids. They're, they're okay, right? Cupids. They, they can have everything they want, but how can they <laughs> kill the All Father Odin? Like he, he's a, a savage motherfucker that is destroying everyone. <laughs> he's the god of the gods. He has a beard, an eye patch, and everything. He's the manliest god ever. Yeah, now, he, now she's the girl. manliest kudere. <laughs> then he's suddenly only. A, a female naked monster that don't even is that strong. I heard a rumor. I don't know if it's true. Okay. Um, yeah. It was from a guy that s supposedly went into the smart studies um, developers, like wherever they are located in Korea, and visited them. I the rumor was that they're a group of three people. They were. This was like a few months ago. They're a group of three people. Like Wait, they what? Have, they have, What's the like, Super League they have head office is like three people. They have one artist, one um, guy that d does like the cons or, not, or like the actual game model like design in the game, and then one mm -hmm. coder. Well, if that's yeah. true, they're doing real good for three people. They are not really putting focus on giving us new stuff. Like, when did we got the last thing that we are playing? It was probably the clan stuff. I don't know. Yeah, clan versus clan. clan. Uh, that, that was directly the Hanamura the ship. The Hanamura ship. 
Yeah, but that's all stuff where they want to make money with. W what do they yeah. give the player to stay at the game? Nothing. But nothing that is changing your game anymore. And yeah, to let these people that are in the late game stay in the game, a lot of them are most likely people that pay money in the game. They give the, they have to give them new stuff. Like how many people that I started to play with quit? Probably 95%, I would say. And they only were quitting the game because there was no content for them anymore. They were able to deal a decent amount of uh, uh, of damage against the Titans, and everything else was cleared. Like, the c content is not super hard. And Colossus is not interesting, it's too expensive, no one wants to progress there, because it's not giving you anything. So, why not, for example, change the Colossus so that you're not getting gems there anymore, but whatever stuff where you can craft armors and weapons or whatever just as an example so like skimpy that you would costumes. be able what skimpy costumes oh i don't God. care what Go they are getting an ancient ancient colossus and you get a swimsuit for your waifu <laughs> yeah I, I mean i would expect them to do that but i hope they are not doing that like okay. What about just as an example that you can craft weapons or whatever just some way to power up on a different way than gems and yeah, we're not getting this. We we have these gems, and if you're lucky, you are done with the jamming. Then all you have to do the whole month is yeah. sliming and then pulling. If you're lucky, you get your monsters, then you are done with the game and quit. If you're not done, you'll play another month. I mean, you sound a lot like me when I think about Fire Emblem Heroes. It's like at the end game, you just have the arena like in that, that game. And then you just, like, you have all the units that you wanted. Um, sure, there's going to be new units that come out that you might want. But other than that, what is there to get? And once you have that, you're just fighting for, like, scores in the arena. What you said earlier at the very beginning of all this, you know, like the game is really friendly to play when you're doing other stuff. That is also its downfall because... The fact that it's designed so you can auto stages twenty times, you mean? I mean, they expect you to do that, so it's you know designed. I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Where, I'm doing that all the time. It's not. No, no. I'm. I'm just saying, like, it, it's just made easier so that the times twenty is, you know, feasible. Yeah. I mean, if, like, like I, said, I think it's hard enough that you have to a, a lot of games yeah. are lacking that you don't have to pay attention the whole time. Like, it would be okay to let MSR run in the background. You will see if you are about to catch a monster or not. And well, if, if you are standing still and waiting for the catch. But I think the problem is that after that point, there is nothing anymore. You, you are farming these monas and cosmos, and basically you are done with the game. If we that's are putting what, it on a very hard way. That's what I'm saying. Like the ability to auto it 20 times and our, you know, sort of want, desire for a more difficult in-game content is it's kind of like, you know, they kind of don't go with each other too well. Do you think if there's you, a, like, do you guys think there's a problem with the design of the battle of the game? Um, no, I, I think it's just meant to, meant to be played in a certain way, and maybe maybe we just like I was doing this podcast with a friend the other night, and we we're talking about all these shortcomings of um, Fire Emblem Heroes, mm -hmm. and you know something he brought up was that the, the the game is fine by itself. It's meant to be played in a specific way. It is a mobile game after all. But it's, you know, mobile games in recent years have evolved in such a way that we sort of no longer view them as that. And since we don't view them as that, we kind of want more playtime on them. You know, we don't yeah. play them like Tetris on a bus like we used to. Uh, so we're not just spending the 10, 20 minutes on them. 
we're doing the few hours on them and that you know is probably not what the game's designed for do, do you feel like they don't play the games themselves like the developers yeah that's what i'm really feeling that at least they are not in the late game that they can see what which is good which is bad what is this game i feel what like as a game, game dev you'd have a sort of um well, what's it detachment or just be a slight bit out of touch right because uh if i was a game dev for this game you know what i'd do my team would be all full of light dark net fives that you guys would be like pissing yourselves over yeah, but if, exactly. if you have everything, you don't know what is good. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, like it, it's a progress. It started the same with Titans. Like, at the beginning, no one obviously had a clue what to do there. Everyone was really surprised that you need so many monsters there. We were expecting something where you need and a lot Mr. less monsters. Barry, um, what, what, like, why are we fighting the Titans? Like, what's the story behind the Titans? Obviously, I have what no clue. They... I don't even know what, what the name of, of my main guy is. So you just is. kill them? What, you, you just kill them for no reason? Yeah, because I'm a bad guy. I really think it's kind of annoying as well. Is mm -hmm. That in general, it's a really casual game. Casual friendly game. Yeah. But some, some stuff is really not made for casual player. A good example would be the calculation of Hunter, Predator and all that stuff. It's not made for casual player. Like if a, a person is using a monster with a hunter skill, it th or that person thinks, yeah, the Leo is getting 50% more crit damage. And the thoughts about the monster are based on that. Is 50% crit damage good? Just on an easy way. But in the end, it's not 50%. If you want to put it in crit damage numbers, it's 75%. For Dark Monster, it's 100%. So they want to make the game simple, but they give us no information about these backgrounds. You could just have like a mode in options where it's like casual mode. Is, isn't it mode. in League of Legends that, that it's you, a tooltip or so? That you yeah, have you to take that little box and you get like all the fucking calculation uh, shit going on but you don't have to have that it's yeah, off but, by but default it, so it, it would be nice if we would have a chance to turn it on like yeah. if we are in the late game you are yeah, only just... fine-tuning your stuff and yeah like that you would see if it's really an increase like I mean... often you, you are calculating crit damage against attack for example and yeah like that you would directly see ah okay it's stronger i can use this one it would not take that much effort to you know maybe maybe they use the stuff better. in math math tests so they can't give you the answers they have to have the answers how else how is it calculated no but the, the answers are for the teachers when they're marking your test results okay in school like you have a i would feel like your math class is just yeah, it's, it's not called Algebra, it's just called Monster Super League. Like, all these um, suggestions that you have for the developers, like, what, or the, all the things that they would need to do to fix the game. Like, if you, were, if you were the developer, how would you be able to, like, get these ideas, you know, to, to actually... Oh, okay, them? okay. I think, first of all, they should listen more to the community. That if people are complaining about stuff, they should make a difference if it's really criticism which is healthy or if it's just crying yeah, good yeah and yeah with that they would get a lot of information already like that no one is playing colors as an example so they, they probably can fix it really fast if they just change some numbers like if it would cost less energy and everything would be a bit weaker as an example that would already be playable the higher stages at least then i think they shouldn't kill the competition completely it's good that it's a casual game but it has to be some competition in it so that 
people that want a competition has it, and people that want to play casual has that as well. And then I think they should try to work with some people that are playing the game for some time together so that they maybe can get a different point of view. They are Maybe they are only seeing the numbers, um, what are our sales today, um, what do we have to implement to get more money, what will let the people stay longer, but maybe they are missing the point of the gamer in general, or the people that are playing the game. So working with some people together that playing the game for a long time, I mean, they know these players exist because they are mentioning them in some of the stories of monsters. Correct. So w why not ask them some simple questions like, what do you think is lacking? in the game or what do you think with small effort will change the game to the better like, why not pick 10 people that play the game for some time which they know have a clue about the game because they mentioned them in these yeah. monsters and ask them for example what do you think how we can attract more people it's, to the game it's really you know it's really easy to sort of put forth someone out there and acknowledge them and give them praise but it's really hard to work with somebody and take on criticism and then follow through with a sort of workflow to uh, improve the game and then you have to take into the account of like you're not going to necessarily know every single one of these players as in like their personalities whether they're going to be easy to work with or if they're going to be a nightmare to deal with. I think yeah, but there's... But in the end, uh, the, the player well. would not get anything from it. It's not that it's like they are part of the company suddenly. Mm, but they wouldn't all agree with you on that, I, I would think. So... I, I would say they if they would not ask like me... You, so. If they would ask me, I would work with them for free. I wouldn't That's you. waste yeah. endless uh, time. Like... But... At least I would try to give them my opinion to make the game better. So in the end, it's more enjoyable for me as well. Mm. And yeah, I think it's kind of cool to work on those kind of stuff. If you, for example, see that if you are talking with them and they think, yeah, that's a good point, And then in the end, they are changing it. I think that's a good feeling. It's like you're influencing right. something. I think that might be enough for a lot of people because if you're like really passionate about the game and they invite you in and you can actually impact the game yourself, like when yeah. you, when you want that. <laughs> what if they disagree with you though? But what yeah, do you mean they I disagree with you? Who who like <coughs> like you, you at the end of the day you're talking game. about putting forth ideas to the developers, which means there is a chance you know because they hold all the cards, so Correct. they gotta be able to turn you down. Yes, but. If they do turn you down, that's not going to go down well for some some people. That's not going to go very smoothly. I don't know. I mean, you see a lot of people are doing that for free. Like, th th they are okay. creating stuff for the people. So why not try to do it in the game itself? Like, how, how many guides are out there? How many, I don't know, gem building suggestions, tier lists? Uh, what and we're making those for our channels, and I'm making them for like you know, there's learning a, the programs and also speech practicing and stuff yeah, like that. But, uh, yeah, but as a different example, what about the Titan guy that I was doing? It's like oh, yeah, ne nearly right. 100 pages, and I get nothing yeah. for it. It's not that I'm getting viewers for it or whatever, I was just yeah. doing it because it was it fun for myself and to help people. Like, if I'm writing a 100 page guide why wouldn't i give my opinion to the developers for free which is taking me not even one tenth of the time and it it's feeling like you're really influencing the game uh, all right um nasty so if you were the developer how would you find these people like the ones that you know are really passionate really care a lot and know a lot about the game 
first I would take a look at Reddit, most likely. A lot of people are on Reddit. I mean, mm -hmm. I think our Reddit is a bit inactive because we don't have too much stuff we can talk about. It's like every question is repeating. Yeah. It seems pretty friendly, though, the MSL Reddit in general. Hopefully yeah, I think that, that's, how that's how it should be. That's how it should be, that it's friendly, in my opinion. Yeah, but some other subreddits are a little bit questionable. It's I don't know if it's just the way people put forth their thoughts, but it comes off a little aggressive. Like I think, yeah, but, but I, I think the, the people ones, that are doing the subreddit stuff are really doing a good job. It's really friendly there. You don't see oh no kidding, can, yeah, cancerous opinions and all that. No, no, no. The mods they're great. All the mods they've always been really nice, but just some of the random people there. Hmm. Yeah, but, but I think that's the first part where I would take a look. You will find a lot of stuff there, like the artists you will find there, people that are doing other stuff, like how many guides are listed in the Reddit already. Like, mm -hmm. if people are able to write guides, in most cases, they have a clue about the game. Like, if, if you see the same person writing over and over again stuff, that he wants to know stuff, that he's giving his opinion on stuff. That's the person that I would ask, how do you see this game or how would you rate it? How can you see a way of improving it? And then, yeah, in the end, you can still decline it. Like if, if he's saying change this, this and this, and then as a developer, you just say, sorry, that's not possible it's too expensive how about or how whatever. about, how about least, if they have you as a player you're, you're getting an opinion back or if i would talk to them and i would suggest them to change the colors and they are um, telling me like yes yeah, sadly that's not possible anymore because i don't know they lost the script for the programming for it also at least i could tell that in my youtube channel then because so, they can't afford Michael Bay to direct the sequel to The Colossus. <laughs> yep. like, like, I have no clue about this stuff. I'm just um, giving an example. Like, if they would tell me that, then at least I would understand why they are not changing it. Then I could you know, give this opinion on my YouTube channel and tell other people, like, this is the reason why they are not changing the colors. While it looks easy for us, it might not be easy in general. I think one way to do it, I think a good way they could do it is, I don't know if Master Super League has like an official website or not, but they have a section on their official website where we can leave feedback. Of course, we'd have to fill in the slots with our in-game name so they can check us up to see if this guy's a one-week-old account or if he's a maxed out, you know, veteran guy who's been playing the game since day one and then read whatever their suggestions may be and perhaps get back to some of these people on a in a more private sort of manner so that it's not all like exposed to the community and all that stuff we are talking a bit negative about it for some time now but in general it's still a really great game yeah, yeah. but it's really just because we are playing it for a long time that we are talking about it like that, in my opinion. You're just making me sad because I, I feel like when I get to the end game, I'm just going to have all this sadness. I, just, I, I play the game, like, I'm not going to lie, I play the game to collect the waifus. All right, like, when that, the that's came doing. out, like, she, she absolutely did not do shit, but, like, I still... I. I evil three her. I gemmed her up. I gave her all my best like pugilist gems, you know. Who? Kana. We're not Kana. Um, Trixie. Chloe. Trixie. Oh shit! Yes, you know I kept her at evil two because I like that form the best. Okay, you can judge me, whatever. But I'm just saying I can evil three her, but I don't want it's, to. It's kind of become that. Um, some people can play the game for that like you know some people are happy playing casually for that but oh shit i just found that in alpaca i think eventually like you know everything needs to it needs to be con everything needs to be constantly growing so i guess we'll 
we'll kind of end it here but if do you guys want to say anything like before we go anything at all anything you want to add <laughs> yeah like i said already don't see it too negative what we are saying here this is really morning on a high level like it's really just that we are playing this game for a very long time that we are seeing this but overall it's still a really great game it's fun i think the community is really great like it's for me more of a social game already than the game itself like all these contacts and discord people that you are talking daily yeah, and then obviously you, you have stuff that is interesting as well like the titans and all that stuff where yeah you you have some time to raise your damage like after two years of being on top what i'm really i still can progress my damage further like it's really high already but it's not that high that I don't feel there is no chance of progress anymore. It's small mm -hmm. and it's luck based, get, get but there is still a chance to, in, yeah, <laughs> like Dark Indras, like other monsters can really improve my damage as well. So there is always still stuff to do. It's just sad to see that, yeah, I, I don't see this will to progress the game. That's what makes me feel a bit negative while I still think it's a great game and I'm not playing this game for two years without a reason. So, yeah, overall, I would say it's really a great game, even if we have this more negative conversation. All right, all right. Well, thank you so much, Nasty. Um, Leafy, do you have anything you want to say? Uh... I don't know, maybe, maybe being Goku and Vegeta isn't all that uh, it's hyped up to be. Maybe I want to be Krillin, you know? Just chill out here with my Android 18 waifu. You know, that that in-game boredom. Game slow and, uh, play it as yeah. As yeah, 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 definitely. But I will still try to make... You know, silly videos or podcast with no actual video footage because my computer is fucking slow and shit. But yeah, definitely interesting to get a glimpse into how Nesty will one day become Cad's successor. <laughs> Maybe I should rename myself. Yeah, change your name to Kaz. Kaz the second. Catsbury, the yeah, return. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But yeah. Oh man, that that's that that's crazy, man. Oh man, I, I see why Caz went crazy. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me. No, you know what's happening with me. <laughs> with with Caz, yes. With, with, if we really get the next content, you will see more in-game footage of me now, the next around. Minute. The next time Cash shows up, he won't be called Cash. He'll be called Nesta Berry. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Who we'll knows? Maybe if, if the, the developers seeing this video, they think like, "Man, this guy is always raging around about us," and, <laughs> and suddenly new I'm boss. part of this. <laughs> they'll give you new content, and then they'll name you the new boss, and then people will just go. They'll in be like, "Yo, what? This guy don't it, even it's know." It's just some mad guy. Cool. You always have to attack it, and it's just getting more mad and mad and. At some point, it's bursting. Yeah, but like he'll turn into a girl and put in a bikini as well. <laughs> yeah, and if, if, it's it? mini nasty berry. <laughs> it's a, like a female oh version my God. Of me that you can play. <laughs>